Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by, joining me during my watchmaking journey. In this video, we've got a, a Favor Luba Twin Power wristwatch. Now it was the, the Twin Power that drew my eye on this. It only cost £20 from eBay, so it's quite a reasonable purchase. And I was intrigued as to what that Twin Power actually meant. So, we will get inside and have a look, but in the meantime, just having a little look at the, the dial and the hands. That crystal needs replacing. The outer case needs a, a little bit of a polish, probably. But it's not looking in too bad a condition. I mean, there is a bit of loom rot on the hands, but it does run. Not very well, as you can see. So we're going to take it apart, give it a service, and see if we can improve those readings. And the back has been chewed up a little bit. As you can see, it's quite scratched. So because of the shape of that, I'm going to struggle, but I will have a go, see what I can do about it. But I do like to have a, a look at the case backs. So that's where previous watchmakers will have left the mark. And as you can see, there's definitely been previous watchmakers working on this movement. I think there's actually, that's a first for me, there's actually a date there, I think 31st of the 8th, 99. Mm. You can see that gasket's seen better days, so we'll replace that as well. Now we can get into the movement. Again, as always, we'll start with taking the power out there. Main springs, there's two of them on this. And it's just a little button to press to release the stem. And then we can get it out of the case. A little kind of a dial ring there. The case has this brushed effect and it looks pretty good to be fair. So I don't think I will do a lot with the actual case. So we can take those hands off. So we will look at those later. I promise not to bend them like I have done in the past. Now, Fevre Luba is a Swiss brand and they do have uh, quite a rich history, dating back to 1737. And that makes them one of the oldest watchmaking brands in the world. Now, the company was founded by Abraham Fevre in the Swiss. Jura region and they gained a reputation for producing high quality and innovative designs with many technical advancements and this twin power being one of them. Now they did introduce in 1962 the Bivac, the first mechanical wristwatch with a, an altimeter that kind of gave them a, a pretty good name. However, over the years, they have changed hands a few times. But again, they are still going to this present day. Now I've loosened up the dial screws, so we're just taking the dial off. And I've noticed here, there's also markings on the back of the dial. And again, I don't think I've ever seen that before. But we will put that away, keep it safe. Can 
carry on disassembling the actual movement. I'm starting on the keyless works. Screws trying to escape. So I'd like to have a little look at the screws as well. I want to take them out that way it helps when they go back in. As you can see there's a there was a bit of oil there keeping that wheel stuck to that spring and cover plate. So I'm just going to get a bit of Rodico and clean it off before I put it in my tray. Now at this point I should take out the yoke spring but I've gone for the crown wheel instead which is my mistake. I don't know if you saw that because I didn't but it went flying. However I'm quite lucky because there it is just next to me. So I can breathe again. It's a bit of a rookie mistake which I would like to say this video actually marks a year's journey into watchmaking so it was last March when I got my first set of tools cheap tools and a movement I made an absolute mess of it but it didn't deter me I did get into that and you do learn and I haven't looked back since. So off comes the cannon pinion. We can turn the movement over. And then we will take out the balance. You okay, know, you take out the balance, you don't want to do any damage to that. That's the, probably one of the most delicate parts of the, the whole movement. I was quite fascinated by the design on this for adjusting the the beat error. You see that copper plate that's covering that uh, almost banana shaped steel plate that's attached to the spring. Well, there's a little hole there and by pushing that either in or out will adjust the beat error, which I will show you a little bit more later. We can go ahead and take out the pallet forks. Which are stuck to that cock. Which again they shouldn't be. I do like the shape of this pallet fork as well. So you do find some movements with unusual shaped pallet forks. So with those up, we can move on to the main springs. Again, like I say, I like to have a little look at the screws just so I know which goes where when it comes time to reassembling it. And you can see those two main springs have dual darba holes as well. And then on the underside of that bridge, you can see the click system along with lots of oil. So again, I'm going to clean that oil off before putting that into my tray and I will dismantle that later. And then we can take the main spring barrels out.
with those out we can move on to the trainer wheels so we'll undo the two screws holding the bridge on and remove those again we'll have a little check of the pivots as they come out There's a bit of oil down in that jewel hole there. I'm just looking at that, that's got a little bit of rust on that escape wheel. We can take off this plate, keeping the centre wheel down. side of that plate and then with the centre wheel out that's the movement pretty much disassembled and there is that extra a wheel that you can see there but that's a press fit I will remove it but before I do that I'm just gonna clean up some of this oil On the other side I'm going to take out the setting lever and then press out that wheel so as a, say a little stud pressed it out with an oiler do is I'm just going to run a bit of pegwood over it, remove any of that stubborn grime, use a bit of Rodico then to clean it up after. And then what I do like to do is do these dial feet screws back up and that way it stops them working loose in the cleaner machine. Okay, now this is the, the click system for those barrels. And you can see there's quite a bit of grease and grime there. So again, before putting these parts into the tray, I am just going to give them a bit of a clean up with some Rodico. Now this is uh, what makes this movement slightly different to other movements is because of the two barrels we've got these uh, set of wheels that link up to the click spring that will stop them unwinding this is one of Fevre Luba's innovative designs. Now these two little wheels are held on by two reverse threaded screws. I mean you can tell that they've got the three lines on the top. So when you do come across any screws with sort of three lines on them, just like that, they usually are reverse threaded. Can you see the state of my Rodico after cleaning that up? But again, I'm going to come in with a bit of pegwood, persuade some of the, the stubborn grime away. And 
Now this sort of pre-cleaning will help save your cleaning liquids in your cleaning machines. I, um, when I very first started the only cleaner machine I had was a ultrasonic cleaner so you know I used to just chuck the distilled water away after each movement but now I've got the, the watch cleaner machine it get pretty expensive to do that so I'm just taking out the jewel holes and I find a bush so to put that back in but we will clean all the remaining holes in the meantime now on this side I do just give them a bit of a, a rub in the jewels and then we'll do the same with the trainer wheels bridge and again this just removes any old dried oil that's sitting in those little jewel wells and then I do like to turn it over and just run my peg pegwood over the the jewels and then I'll give the pivot so the wheels are clean and I use a bit of ever stick for that held in a, a pin vise And again, this is that escape wheel. I'm going to give the pivots a little clean and then get a, a nylon brush and just see if I can remove some of those rust spots. Now, you'd have to be very careful and gentle. You don't want to break any of those pivots on, on any of the wheels. those clean we can look to remove the springs from the barrels now these are those arbors that are attached to the lid I've come across this sort of thing a few times but you can see how much oil is in there we're going to use a bit of Rodico clean it up I mean look at the state of that it's making a right mess of me map still before it goes back in any of the trays I will clean them up as best I can I think there are a, a few little rust spots on the top of these barrel lids so uh, again out comes the nylon brush give it a little bit of a clean I mean somebody's had a go in the past by the looks of it now, I wouldn't know how to to make that look any better so I shan't at the minute now I am probably going to replace these two main springs but we will take them out and see what sort of condition they're in I mean, they don't look too bad apart from being very grubby there's one removed Look at the inside of that barrel and the end of Morodico. Nice. However, saying that again, I've got a feeling people in the future are going to find some of my watches and probably say the same. So I don't know. I've been known to use a bit, bit much oil in the mainspring barrel. We've just taken out this second spring now. We'll do just the same. Clean up bits with some Rodico and then we can get it into the cleaning baskets
And just while we're doing this, I would like to say thank you to everybody that takes the time to watch these videos. I really do appreciate it. I mean, when I started, I thought there'd be a, a couple of people, but it seems that there's there's quite a few more than I thought actually enjoy it. So again, thank you. It really is appreciated. So with the baskets loaded, I am going to put the pallet fork into this bee dip. And then we can go over to the cleaning machine and we can get all of these parts sparkling. in the machine cleaning we will put the case into the ultrasonic cleaner like I say in my early days a year ago this is all I had to clean watch parts with and it did a great job to be honest but now I do pretty much use it only for cases and straps Horrible noise. And with that done, all of the parts clean, we can look to getting the movement back together. And we're going to start with that bush right in the centre. To do this, I'm going to use my little jeweling kit. Now you could actually do this with a staking set as well, but I've just got this this to hand. It's a, a little bit easier to show, I think. So what I'm going to do is is find a bottom hole. That's probably the wrong way to phrase it. <laughs> But basically what it wants to do is half sit on the plate and half sit on the hole. And then I'll use a slightly smaller one at the top and then it should press that down level with the plate. And again if we need to adjust it later then we can. There we go, that seems to have worked. Seems to have worked well. So, a tiny drop of oil into the barrels. Now I'm only going to show one, but it's the same process for both. And then we've got a, a new spring. Push it down as much as I can with my finger. And then just using either tweezers or in this particular case I'm using my hand removers is just to push it down and there you go that's sat in the barrel we can put the barrel lid on now again the arp is attached to the lid so it's just a case of manip manipulating it until it drops down we can get this wheel that was held on with that press stud and drop a little bit of oil in there first and in comes the pin now I'm just going to use my hand press just to press that back down in got a nylon end so it won't do any damage and clean up any excess oil and 
and then we can put the trainer wheels back in and starting with the, the center wheel and again we're just going to add a, a tiny drop of oil to that center shaft we can drop that down into place and then put that cover plate back on In goes that escape wheel. The fourth wheel. And then that's the wheel with the second hand attached to it. over them in we can come in with the the bridge now again sometimes this can be a real fiddly job and other times the wheels will just drop into those jewel holes lovely but again if you if you are struggling walk away give yourself five minutes and come back that does help and if you've got time make yourself a cup of tea that really helps so as you can see, I'm just manoeuvring and manipulating the wheels now. And you'll almost just see it drop down. There you go. So with those in place, keep some pegwood on the top. Put a screw in. And then that should stop anything moving afterwards. And come in with the second screw. And just make sure everything all runs free still as it does. a bit of grease onto the, the setting lever and drop that into place and then we can start reassembling our little trainer wheels on the underside of the barrel bridge and the tiniest bit of oil and then this is that reverse threaded screw second wheel which is the same what I'm just doing there is I'm trying to turn it over because there is a, a slight recess where the screw sits give a tiny drop of oil those in place. I'm coming with a bit of Rodico, clean up any excess oil that's lying about. The 
This is the bush for the ratchet wheel. Tiny drop of oil in there. And then we can come in and screw it down. Then it's time for the click. Make sure we get it the right way round. Always helps. Now I'm just manipulating it into the right position. And then once that's in the right position we can pop the, the spring on. Just like that. And there is this screw with a big head. That will keep that in place. Just making sure that it engages. And then we'll add a, a tiny drop of oil in. And then into the barrel arbor holes. main springs drop a tiny drop of oil onto the top of the arbors there and on goes the Barrel bridge. Make sure everything turns freely, as you can see it does. We'll drop the screws in, get them tightened. Now the Favor Luba 253 movement twin power was produced in 1982. So that'll be around the sort of era this is from. Again, I mentioned that has a right way and a wrong way. I don't know if you see there, but the bottom of that is chamfered. So that wants to go down. And we can add a bit of blue grease to this sliding clutch. And then a bit of blue grease on this clutch wheel. we can get them into the correct positions. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of oil onto this center wheel post before the cannon pinion goes on. And 
one just needs to be seated. Just a gentle bit of pressure. And that's in. And before the minute wheel goes in, I need to oil that jewel hole. And then we'll add a bit of oil to the post and where the minute wheel runs. And then we can put that mini wheel on. This needs to go on before the set and lever spring and cover go on. And we'll add a bit of oil to the oak post. And then we'll install the oak. It looks a little bit like a duck. I won't do any duck impressions, don't worry. seated properly and then it's yoke spring time hold my breath oh. there we go quick let's see at that Set and lever, spring and cover in place. There. Now we can get the screw in. Screw tightened down. And we'll get the crown in. It's winding stem. Drop a little bit of blue grease where these two bits of metal meet. Work that through. that work through we'll get a bit of rodico and tidy up after ourselves and then we're going to turn the movement over and we'll get the pallet fork in can you see what I mean by that being a funny shape I think it's great Can get the cock in. As you can see, that is through the jewel hole. that tightened down we can put a bit of power into the movement and then what we're going to do here is we're just going to check that the pallet fork snaps over as it should do and then we're going to add a bit of grease I'm trying something different this time I'm going from the underside, from the dial side I should say. And then we can just work that over the teeth. Do that a couple more times. And then we can see how well this runs. It's all my always my favourite part. a little shake just to 
see if that will seat the pinion. There we go. Just need to get that screw in. Once that plate is nice and level, there we go. It'll just kick up and keep going. So that's all these capsules. Drop them into a bit of Persian B dip. What that will do is that will give it a clean. up to the end of my finger there this is just a bit of watchmaker's tissue that'll help dry it and then we can add a tiny drop of oil just to the center like that and add the chaton back on get that back into place then now I do apologize but the footage for oil in the rest of the watch has disappeared but I can assure you it was oiled but we will Get on to the time grapher. And as you can see, a bit of adjustment needed. Now, as I said earlier, on the balance there's this sliding plate, which is oh it's nearly deadly. But just that there. So by adjusting that, we'll adjust how many milliseconds it'll be out hopefully we'll get it right down there we go so let's carry on with the reassembly so we'll get the hour wheel on and then the dial washer and we'll get it out the movement holder and we can get the dial back on. Now I did loosen the dial feet screws off. I did that off camera. As you can see, it's not the easiest of things to film. But with the dial on, let's look to the hands. So I've had them soaking in some isopropyl alcohol. That seems to have taken rid of Sorry, I should say it's taken care of the, the loom, gotten rid of it. And then we'll just scrape off the remaining paint. And we'll rinse it off again in the isopropyl alcohol. As you can see the bits at the bottom there it's left. And once they're clean, we'll add some more paint to the underside. I always like to go to the underside when adding loom or paint. And then it's time for the loom. And then once they're dry, we can get them back on the watch. The hour hand. And then comes the minute hand.
press that down. And then we should make sure that they're not fouling on each other. And then we can put the second hand on. Very gently press that into place. Now we can look to get it into the case. So just pressing in the release button for the winding stem, and then we get this spacer ring on. Now I need to take this old gasket off the back and it is almost welded in place. So it does take a little while and it comes out in bits, makes an absolute mess. But we can get it out and we can get a new greased one in. But as you can see it's just coming out in little pieces. You can see the mess it's left my bench. But we can get a new gasket on. We can get the watch with a strap on it. And we'll see it out in the wild. So again, thank you for joining me. I do hope you've enjoyed it please hit the subscribe button and then you'll get notified the next time I release a video. Usually try once a month at least. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.